Hey Creeps, it's Cameron Chaney, author of the Autumn Crow High series, and welcome back to Library Macabre. As always, it is dark and spooky here in the library, but outside, it's actually a beautiful day. The sun is shining, the birds are chirping, and it kind of makes me nostalgic for the Fear Street movies, which premiered last July, July 2021. When the movies premiered on Netflix last year, everybody got Fear Street fever. Everybody was talking about Fear Street. Everybody was going back and rereading all of the books from their childhood, and I did the same thing. I went back to the very beginning of the Fear Street series and started reading the series from the beginning, rereading any of the books that I missed, as well as reading any of the books that I had never read as a kid. And I made a bunch of vlogs about my reading experiences with the Fear Street series, and I reacted to the movies and gave you my thoughts on those, and it was a really, really good month. I was at my happiest. I was reading Fear Street books, and I was watching these movies that I had been waiting for for so, so long, and everybody else was into Fear Street too, and we were all sharing the experience together and talking about the books again and talking about the movies. And not only was I at my peak in terms of happiness, but also my channel was thriving, and everybody was really enjoying the Fear Street vlogs. So I thought, why not do another Fear Street reading vlog? In my last reading vlog, I left off with The Prom Queen. That is the, the last Fear Street book that I read. Loved it. I had never read it before as a kid, so this was my first time reading it. It was very much like an 80s slasher film. This was when Fear Street was really at its peak, is when The Prom Queen came out, and you had Silent Night, and you had a lot of these really, really great Fear Street books coming out, and it was really at its best. I am going to continue off of where I left off, and I'm going to read the next book in the series, which is first date. So this is another one that I have not read yet. This will be a first time read for me, but it's one that I have always wanted to read ever since I was a kid and I just never got around to it. So I'm going to be reading this one next and I'm hoping to read quite a few other Fear Street books over the next two weeks. This should be a really fun vlog. We're going to be reading a ton of Fear Street books. I'm going to be doing a bunch of other things as well as at the end of the vlog, I'm going to be going on a weekend retreat to Hocking Hills, Ohio. And Hocking Hills is also known as a really haunted place as well. So I think it's going to, it's going to be on brand with the whole Fear Street thing. So without further ado, I'm going to go sit down in my living room and go ahead and read some of First Date. see out and no one can see in, she said, snuggling against his shoulder. It's like we're in our own private world. He smiled at her and hugged her closer. He kissed her, a long, lingering kiss. She closed her eyes. He kept his wide open, staring at the windshield. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I have only read the first chapter so far and I already need to make a comment about this book. The opening chapter of this is probably my favorite of all of the Fear Street openings that I have read so far. It rocks and it is just the ultimate Fear Street opening. <laughs> You've got the girl who's on a date with this, 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 this sexy guy and there's obviously something wrong, like really, really wrong with this dude. You're all up in his head and he's thinking about how much she looks like all of the other girls. What other girls? <laughs> girls that he's gone on dates with? No, there's there's a whole lot more to it than that. It's pretty clear that whoever this guy is, he is murdering his dates. And it's really dark and it's really messed up, especially being so deep inside of his head. And I love it. <laughs> I really like it. So I'm enjoying this so far and I am really, really pumped to read even more. So I know this is going to be following a girl named Chelsea Richards who lives in Shadyside. And whoever this guy is, we don't really know what his real name is, he is now on his way to Shadyside because it sounds like a place he'd like. Shadyside. Shadyside. I'm really excited to get deeper into this. I'm loving it already and I'm only eight pages in. So let's read some more. Okay, I've read a little bit more of first date, just a little bit more. I was gonna read more than what I read, but my uh, sister and my brother-in-law are going to grill out hot dogs, which sounds amazing right now. So we're gonna do that, and I will afterwards probably go on a walk. Kinda wanna go to the cemetery, because reading Fear Street books always makes me wanna you know, go for a walk and visit the cemetery. 
as you do. So after I'm done eating, I'm gonna do that and then I'll come home and probably do some writing and then also dig into first date a little bit more before bed. And I'm really enjoying this so far. I will say the main character, Chelsea Richards, is a little bit whiny and a little bit annoying, but I'm pretty, pretty patient when it comes to characters like that because I realize you know, your characters gotta grow, especially when they're when they're teenagers. They're gonna be a little whiny, but eventually they're probably gonna go through enough shit that they grow up. So I'm hoping that'll be the case with Chelsea Richards right here. I will say though, there are so far a lot of comments about uh, her weight and all of her insecurities, which is just such a staple of, of Fear Street books. It was, uh, what year? what year was this published? 91, I think, 92. 92 so it's a pretty old book it's gonna happen <laughs> uh, but i'm going to go get some hot dogs and go for a walk and then we'll get into this later So it is the next day. I got back from work and did a little bit more reading in first date. So I'm about 70 pages in. And <sighs> there was a scene in this book that r really kind of surprised me. I've said it before in previous vlogs that it's never a smart idea to own a pet on Fear Street or anywhere in Shadyside, honestly. And this scene was a good example um, as as to why that's not a good idea. It wasn't a super graphic scene, but at the same time, there's it's not subtle. <laughs> I don't like that. It, it does make me sad, but I'm going to keep reading it. I do know it's just a book. Um, and it just kind of adds to the trashiness of these books. And there's going to be things like that in trashy books. So um, it's kind of kind of to be expected, I guess. But yeah, it did kind of surprise me because I was like, whoa, okay, wow. <laughs> um, but overall, I am really enjoying this. Uh, so far, not a whole lot has happened. We are following the main character, Chelsea, who just desperately wants to go on her first date. She just wants a boyfriend so bad. She's new in Shadyside as well and doesn't really know people that well. And her her one friend that she's gotten to be close to has a boyfriend and they're always just like making out right in front of Chelsea. So there are two different guys that she's kind of interested in. So there's this new guy that just moved to Shadyside. And then there's this other guy who um, comes into her dad's diner a lot. And she works as a waitress at this little coffee shop, a uh, little diner. And this other guy comes in there a lot. He's kind of a little rougher looking, you know, leather jacket. And then the other guy that's new in Shadyside is very shy and quiet, but they both look very, very much alike. They both have black hair. They're both very athletic looking. So you're kind of wondering, which guy is it? Because obviously one of these two guys is the killer that we read about in the first chapter of the book, the one that decides to go to Shadyside to look for a new girl to kill. So obviously it's one of these boys and the mystery is 
which one is gonna try to kill her. Right now she has a date with the boy from her high school, the new boy, so I'm gonna see where this is gonna go. I'm pretty sure it's him <laughs> so far. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm not gonna do any spoilers in this video, but that's just my my little prediction because he is very suspicious while the other guy just seems to be kind of a bad boy, but it's it's on the surface. He's not probably not really that, that bad. I'm really, really liking this so far. Uh, I just love Fear Street. I, I am always at my happiest when I'm reading a Fear Street book. There's just something about them they're just so breezy and so entertaining. They're not too detailed. Arl Stein is actually really good about being brief, but he's not too brief. These books are just like the perfect balance of all of that. They're nostalgic and I love them. I love this series with all of my heart. I'm actually going to take a shower next and I'm gonna watch a little bit of Twin Peaks after that. Twin Peaks The Return, because I just recently rewatched Twin Peaks, the original series. I rewatched Fire Walk With Me, and now I am finally, finally watching Twin Peaks The Return, and I'm loving it. I'm about 13 episodes in, so I'm getting really close to the ending, and I wanna watch a little bit more of that tonight. So yeah, I will check in with you really soon about more of my thoughts of a first date. the song! <laughs> So it is currently Tuesday and I just got home from work and I actually had quite a bit of time at work to get some reading in between classes and I finished reading First Date and I really enjoyed this one overall. Um, there were a couple things I didn't like, of course, but <laughs> I mostly really enjoyed it. I don't want to say anything else that happened in the book because I feel like everything I've already told you was in the synopsis. Telling you any more would just be a spoiler. So it's a relatively simple book overall. There's there's not any big twist. There's, there's nothing that's going to surprise you except for maybe the scene I was talking about yesterday, <laughs> which was really, really messed up. I will say the character of, of Chelsea Richards is definitely not my favorite. Um, she's the kind of character that complains an awful lot. But at the end of the day, R.L. Stein doesn't always go out of his way to make likable characters. And then of course our villain here, he has issues. <laughs> he is he is a Fear Street creep, let's just say. I liked it overall. I would say I give this one maybe three and a half stars, possibly four if I were to round it up, but I would say three and a half is a nice happy medium. The next book in the series is one that I have been so pumped to read. So pumped because this is one of my favorite covers of the series, but I've never read it. Um, I didn't actually get a copy until pretty recently. So I finally found one and that means I can finally read this book. And that is Goodnight Kiss, which is a super chiller. And this one is about vampires. I mean, just look at that cover. It's so good. It's glorious, glorious, glorious cover. Definitely a whole lot more seductive than the previous books in this series. So very, very excited to start reading this. I'm gonna start this tonight. But first I made some coffee and of course I needed to watch Kelsey from Slime and Slasher. She just posted her new video. If you've not watched Kelsey from Slime and Slasher, highly recommend it. If you like my kind of content, you like vintage horror and uh, vintage children's books and things like that, that's what she does. It's all about the 90s and her channel's just so great so please go check it out i will link her channel down below jessica sandals clumped over the wood planks of the walk as she made her way quickly past the small shops and restaurants she stopped in front of the beach emporium the largest clothing store in sandy hollow and peered into the window hand-painted sign read, bikinis, half off. <laughs> hey guys, it is Thursday and I just got back from work. I forgot to update the vlog yesterday. Oopsie. But that's okay because I got quite a bit of reading done at work today. I read over a hundred pages of Goodnight Kiss. The entire time I was reading this book, I had the biggest smile on my face. This might, and if I'm not finished yet, I'm just halfway through, so I still have a little bit to go still. But if it sticks the landing, it may be a new favorite Fear Street book of mine. I'm 
Really bummed that I didn't read this as a kid because I think I would have really liked this. And this has all of the Lost Boys vibes. So we have our main character who is who lives on Fear Street. She is going on vacation with her family to, um, let's see, what is this place even called? I don't know, somewhere in Florida, I guess. It's, it's some uh, seaside town with a boardwalk and there's an arcade and there's um, there's a carnival that's in town setting up and you have foggy beaches and and bonfires on the beach at night and it's so full of atmosphere and R.L. Stein is firing on all cylinders when it comes to the descriptions and the sounds and the smells the sights um, the the sound of the flip-flops on the beach and the wet sand and the fog creeping in it's got all of that, and it's not too much either. It's just enough that it doesn't take you out of the story. It's, it's enough to put you in there and make you experience it, but he doesn't do any kind of overkill. It's really a great balance, and I think this might be probably one of his better read, written books that I've read so far. And it's fun. It is so much fun. Definitely very much a Lost Boys kind of thing. With vampires making a deal to see who can turn someone into a vampire first like which one can do it the fastest and it's funny and you get to hear this this bickering between the vampires it feels very much like Buffy the Vampire Slayer in that way only this was um, a little bit before Buffy the Vampire Slayer. This came out in June 92 so around the same time as the original Buffy movie. So that's Good Night Kiss. I'm hoping I can get a little bit more reading done tonight though I do have quite a bit of writing that I need to do. It's actually a really good day for writing because it's dreary and gloomy and rainy and stormy and all of the good things for writing. <laughs> the elements for writing and for reading spooky stories. Though I would say this is a good beach read. I would love to read this on the beach. But yeah, I'm going to go and do some writing right now and I will catch you guys really soon with another update. Actually, I, 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 I take that back. I, I have an unboxing. <laughs> I got a package in the mail and this isn't it's not Fear Street. It's not Fear Street related, but it's close. It's close enough. I thought it would be fun to do a little unboxing here in the video. I know Kelsey from Slime and Slasher. She's always doing unboxings in her vlogs. I ordered a couple of Christopher Pike books that I was missing, and I have the majority of his teen books. I'm still missing a couple, a couple, but his Spooksville books is in a series that I've been trying to find a whole lot more of. And I found a couple on eBay the other day. And I'm really, really excited to have these to add to my collection because they are a couple of, of rarer Spooksville books. And here we go. So we have book number seven, The Dark Corner. The Dark Corner, not Corridor. Love the cover on this one. I love the covers on these Spooksville books. They're really, really cheesy and campy, but... I adore them, of course. So that's book number seven. And then we have book number 18, <gasps> Attack of the Killer Crabs, which is one that I've been wanting for so long. This is one of the rarest books in the series. Very, very hard to find. Could not believe I was able to score a copy of this book. And just look at the embossing on these covers. This one's just got the embossed font. But this one is totally embossed. Look at that. Love the texture. And these are both in beautiful condition and they're both first printings to add to my collection. So I'm getting closer to completing my Spooksville collection. So yeah, Spooksville, yay! Hey creeps, it is Monday and I'm at work here on the bookmobile. I'm actually working solo today, so I wanted to kind of show you my view here. It's a beautiful day. I've got the windows open, the door open. So I am halfway through Goodnight Kiss. I am just starting part two. And so far, our, our uh, vampires bet that they have going on isn't going too well. They keep trying to foil each other's plans. And it's kind of funny just seeing how our main characters have fallen into the games of these vampires. It's pretty good. I'm really, really enjoying this. So I'm going to hopefully finish this book today. I should have a little bit of time here to read. So hopefully I can finish it and I'll let you know what I think when I'm done. He realized he had awakened from the dream with a word on his lips. Say it. Say the word, he urged himself. And so he said it. Vampires. Stephanie Meyer read Goodnight Kiss. Sorry guys, I just got out of the shower and my hair is a mess! It's Thursday evening, 
week one. I haven't really updated the vlog because honestly, I've just been working a lot. I've been writing a lot. I needed to submit a story. So I got that done and submitted and edited and all that stuff. So now I am finally kind of free to finish up my reading for the vlog and actually film some clips for the vlog. <laughs> so I, I finally finished reading Goodnight Kiss. Loved this book. Honestly, probably one of my new favorite Fear Street books. I really, really wish I would have read this when I was a kid because I think I would have really liked it. It definitely lives up to the cover. I love the atmosphere. I love the descriptions of the beach and the, the island with the mansion out in the, in the ocean and there's bats flying everywhere all over the beach. I also love the ending. The ending was great. It made me laugh. It's uh, something I did kind of see coming, but I'm really glad that Arlstein did it because I would have been disappointed had it not happened. So I really, really liked this, guys. It totally lives up to the cover. Check it out. It's a whole lot of fun. So that means that the next book in the series is Cheerleaders the first evil. So this is the very, very first uh, trilogy that R.L. Stein wrote for the Fear Street series. And boy, is this a banger. I love this trilogy. I've already read this. I've read this one twice, and I've read books two and three in the trilogy once. So I read the trilogy when I was a kid, preteen, probably 11, 12. And then I reread this about, I don't know, seven, eight years ago. So one of the things I'm really, really excited about is that tomorrow I am leaving with my sister and my brother-in-law and we're gonna go to Hocking Hills, Ohio. We got an Airbnb out in the woods. It's in a really, really nice spot, really close to all the really cool hiking spots. Um, so we also have a hot tub and there's a Pac-Man arcade game and like foosball. And it's a really, really nice spot little place and I'm going to use it as an opportunity to have kind of a little writer's retreat and I'm going to be reading a lot so I'm going to bring this along with me. I'm also going to be bringing of course a couple of Friday the 13th movies because I have to. <laughs> I have to watch Friday the 13th movies while staying in a house in the middle of the woods. It's got to be done. Anyway I am taking the day off work tomorrow so that way we can leave early in the morning. We're going to hit up a couple of bookstores on the way. So of course, I'm going to bring you guys along to those. I've never been to these bookstores before, but I'm really excited to check them out. There's one called Paperback Exchange. There's another one, which I can't remember the name right off the top of my head, but it's another used bookstore. We're going to get lunch while we're there, and then we're going up to our Airbnb, and we're going to do some hiking. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm very, very excited. I need a vacation. It's been like two years since I've been anywhere. Actually, that haunted castle that I went to and I posted a video about it was the last vacation I went on and that was a little more than two years ago. So yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> so since we are leaving tomorrow morning, that means I need to get my butt in gear and I need to pack. So let's do that right now. 